Hello, in this video we're going to look at the singular value decomposition. Uh, two background videos for this are these uh, videos that I have out called the spectral decomposition or eigen decomposition. Uh, the positive eigenvalues of x prime x and x x prime are equal. So we're going to point back to these, but they're separate videos so we don't have to reprove them. And the singular value decomposition Position theorem is this. Let's let X be an M by N matrix with rank R. There exists P and Q where they are M by M and N by N orthogonal matrices such that X is equal to PDQ prime. Or since those are orthogonal, then you know we can multiply them to the other side and represent this as D is equal to pre prime P prime XQ. Now D is a rectangular where D is rectangular with, and this is in quotes, diagonal elements that are the principal roots of the positive eigenvalues of X prime X and X X prime. The, the positive values are the same for both of those. Um, now diagonal, I want to spend a minute or two what I mean by that. And this is my wording, and I, you know, every, you know, the way other people phrase this is a little bit different. So you're getting my thoughts on it. So here, here's the note. So D is an M by N matrix. So it's not a square matrix necessarily. And uh, with R diagonal, again in quote, elements and zero elsewhere. Now we will assume that for this video, R is less than M and R is less than N. Then D is this where delta again is the diagonal r by r matrix with the principal roots of the positive eigenvalues of x prime x. So this matrix is square and it should be pointed out that you know this is the no m rows and c columns. So the number of columns with zero here are different than the number of rows with zero here. And also Let's say that uh, R equals M and R is less than N. So actually all of these zero rows go away and the matrix is, is, is just this rectangle. And then the, the other way, so if R equals N but R is less than M, then all of these columns go away and the matrix is just this. And if R equals M, which equals N, then there are no the, there are no columns here or rows here. It's just this delta matrix. It's an R by R diagonal, exactly diagonal matrix. So that's what I mean by diagonal. It's the one column, one row, two column, two row. You know where they equal. There's there's a there's the eigenvalues down that. Okay. So let's uh, let's proceed to the proof. And we're going to note that X prime X is symmetric. And by the uh, spectral decomposition theorem, there exists, exists an N by N orthogonal matrix Q such that we can pre and post multiply by Q to get this uh, diagonal matrix. And so now one note is that the eigenvalues of X prime X, you know, whatever they are, that, you know, they are. But then if we take the square root of them, actually the principal root, which means the positive part of it. If you take a square root, you get a plus or minus. But if you only want the positive, it's called the principal root. And so that's the principal root of these eigenvalues. So if we square this, then we get the eigenvalues back. And that's what we're saying here. We want the, the eigenvalues of this is what this is. And since um, this is not full rank, there's going to be zero um, eigenvalues with some multiplicity. So this is an N by N matrix. So the number of columns and the number of rows are the same here. Um, and this is by the, the, uh, the spectral decomposition theorem. But let's break Q into Q1 and Q2 where Q1 is N by R. And then this product here can be thought of like this. So then when you multiply this out, you get this, so it's Q1 prime, X prime X, Q1. And then, you know, it's Q1 and Q2 here, two and two and two and one. You get this uh, product. Now this matrix equals this one because the way we broke up Q1 for the size of it. So this piece here 
is equal to the, these eigenvalues. And so that's what this says. Now notice too that this equals zero, and of course this equals zero. But if we look at this piece here, which is this, it equals zero. So this is x q2 prime times x q2. That's zero, that's this piece, which implies that just x q2 is zero. So we gathered this from this, okay? So now let's proceed. So what we have so far is we, you know, of course we're given x, and then we can find this x prime x. Now, given this, we can find q. Now we have to find p, and that's what we do here. So p is going to be this uh, matrix. It is, um, so q is n by n. P is M by M, okay? And we're going to break it down where this is, a, there's R columns here and then M minus R columns here. But P1, we're going to let be this. So it's an M by R matrix. Now, we want this to be orthogonal. So that says if, if we take any vectors in P1 dotted with itself, it better be, either zero or one. You know, if it's dotted with itself, it's one. If it's dotted with something else, it's zero. So let's look at that to make sure that this at least is the start of an orthogonal matrix. So x1 prime x1, so we plug in the definition of P1. I, mean, I said x, P1 prime P1. So then when we take the transpose, we have to, you know, reverse this order and put a tick in front of them. But this is a diagonal matrix, so it's, it's symmetric. But this right here, Q1 prime X prime X Q1, we said was delta squared. And then you have the two inverses, so those cancel. And it is the identity matrix. So this is part of it. But since this is an M by M matrix, we're just going to pick the other M by R uh, columns to make this an orthogonal. So we're going to make P... P2 such that P is orthogonal. So it, it's kind of irrelevant what it is, but we just need to know that the whole thing is orthogonal. Then, by, um, by definition, columns here dotted with columns in here are exactly zero. So if we look at P2 prime P1, this better be zero because the way we defined them to be orthogonal, right? So it, it is zero. But if we plug in what we know about P1, we get this. And since this is a diagonal matrix, you know, we can take it to the other side, post multiply by delta, and it's still zero. So that implies this piece here is zero. Now, thus, let's look at all the pieces that we have. X is, was given, we found Q, and we developed P. So now let's look at this product. And and I skipped this a uh, step here. In retrospect, I wish I wouldn't have. But we're going to put in P of P1 and P2. And Q is Q1 and Q2. So after that multiplication, it becomes this. Then um, we plug in what we know. This right here, um, if we put in P1, it's that. And we just leave X and Q1 the same. Um, uh, we plug in P1 for here. This, of course, just carries over. That carries over. Now, this here, the, uh, this second part is delta squared. X, uh, XQ2 is zero. So that, and so that means, oh, this is zero from what we said before. And so XQ2 is zero. So that becomes zero. So all these are zero. And delta minus one delta squared is actually just delta. And actually that's what we set out to prove. So that's the proof of the singular value decomposition theorem. Well, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed that. I sure did. Uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.